Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord unto the land. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And in his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Come on in here, high calling. Let's shout a praise to the God who woke us up early this morning. Come on, high and calling. Let's give a praise unto the God who gives us the activities of our life. Come on, high and calling. You want to have a praise for the God who loved you enough to send his own son to die for you. Will you give him a praise this morning? He's worthy of our praise. We're going to receive an opening from the choir this morning.
Amen. So we are grateful this morning. Certainly we want to give honor this morning to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. To those whom honor is due. Amen. We do recognize, amen, that Bishop J. O. Williams has a higher calling today. Amen. We want to recognize him. Amen. I also to let him know that he is welcome, amen, to this pulpit at any time. Amen. We thank you for also. Amen, Reverend Francine. Uh, is here with us today. Amen. 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 In our midst, amen. amen. May God be the glory. Amen. You are also welcome in our court. Amen. 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 As is Reverend Doris Roberts, whom we see in the very, very back. Amen. amen. Hiding behind amen. the long veins and veins of food. The pastor got a cat out. Amen. We see you. We thank God for you. Amen. Good to know, amen, that God is healed. Amen. How many know that God is a healer? Amen. And you know something? We're going to do something real quick, amen. Amen. I know that, you know, today is one of those days where you want to go lay around the house and it's raining. It's going to be raining all day. Amen. So it'll still be raining when you get out of church. <laughs> Well, will you do something for me right now? Amen. 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 I want everybody to stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. Y'all look lazy today. Amen. All right, look. Now, now, just turn and look over there. Over there. Now, y'all turn and look over there. And just walk over and shake hands. And say, I love you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.
Psalms 115, verses 14 through 18. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The day praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord. Father, again, we 
say thank you. Amen. These blessings we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.
Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. 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 Truly thank God. Amen. For our scripture reading, our prayer, and for the song. Amen. From our youth choir. Amen. 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 To God be all the glory. Amen. amen. And this time we will have uh, announcements. Announcements are as follows. Um, for Women's Day uh, on May 4th, uh, there will be a prayer breakfast uh, with um, Mom Kitty Amen. as the speaker. Amen. 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 On May 5th, Amen, uh, it will be the actual Women's Day service. Amen. Amen. Uh, Co Pastor Drone from the Born Again Ministry, Amen. Uh, along with her church, will Amen. be here. And the choir and ushers. And the church, amen. amen. We are asking that you women, if you would remember your assessments. Amen. 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 And to those men, amen, if you would like to help them, then you do it too. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Also, I would like to uh, announce that April 26th, uh, that's this coming Friday, uh, Living Water. Amen. Uh, we are to be at Living Water at 7 o'clock. Amen. 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 Boy. Amen. <laughs> it feels like an echo in here. All these folks. Amen. I know that it's Friday night. Amen. But we're only going to be there a couple of hours. Amen. We ain't gonna be there all night. We ain't gonna be all night long. So it's, a, it's a two hour service at the longest. Amen? Amen. So can we meet at Lemon Waters at 7 o'clock on Friday night? Jeez. It looks like I'm going by myself. Hey. One of you, I'm gonna be looking for you. I'm just telling you. I'm just In the church says amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. I suspect the van will be uh, leaving uh, probably around 6.15 or so. Can the church say amen? Amen. 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 It's offering time. Amen. We got a better response off the offering. You know nobody wants to say nothing about the offering. You got your offering, will you get it in your hand, please? How many know that the tithe is holy unto the Lord? Amen. 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 And stuff that belongs to the Lord. If I were you, I wouldn't mess with that. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen. If it belongs to God, give God what belongs to Him. Yes. If you give God what belongs to Him, then He'll bless that which belongs to you. Yes. yes. Can the church say amen? Amen. Amen. I know that that is the truth. Because I have been tithing for 30 years. And I'm kind of like David. I was when young. Yeah. And now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsake or his seed beg and bread. Get a church, say amen. 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 If you have your tithe, will you put it in your right hand, please? Repeat after me, Holy Father. Holy Father. I bring my tithe into the storehouse in obedience to your command. I give it freely. I give it honestly. And without, reservation. and without reservation, I thank you, Father, I thank you, Father for opening the windows of heaven, for the windows of heaven and, pouring and pouring out a blessing for me, for me and, my and my family. I thank you, Father, I thank you, Father for, providing me for providing me with all I need. I thank you for rebuking the devourer for, for my sake. I thank you that his hands are tied. Concerning my money. I thank you that I'm whole, that I'm free, and that I'm blessed. 
shout hallelujah. If you know you're blessed, shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We're going to ask our deacons to come. They're going to receive our tithe and our offering. The choir shall sing at the appointed time. something very beautiful to us for us next month. Amen. Let's try to help them do that. In the church, say amen. amen. Oh, and by the way, don't think that they're just asking you to do it. Amen. They're selling desserts next uh, in, the, in the fellowship hall. In the, after service in the fellowship hall. They are working for themselves. Amen. They wore a uniform so they're working to get a uniform. But it's your pastor that's asking you to help him out. Can the church say amen? Amen.
the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Truly, we thank you. Amen. For your giving. Amen. In the tithe and in the offering. Amen. We know that God is pleased. Amen. When we are obedient to him. Amen. And it is definitely, as the scripture says, more cheerful. Amen. To give. Amen. 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 More blessed to give sometimes than to receive. Amen. Amen. You get a blessing, amen, just from giving. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We're grateful, amen, for what you have given today. It is word time. Amen. Amen. And we have a very, very capable preacher. Uh, today, I, I do want to say, amen, I am grateful, amen, for Reverend Valerie Jones, who is our preacher today, amen. Uh, she has stood in for me as while well I have been uh, recovering, amen, from illness, amen. We are grateful for her, amen. She has done such a wonderful job, amen, and she has, amen, uh, stood behind this desk, amen. This, I found out that this isn't the most comfortable desk to stand behind. <laughs> Amen. amen. But how many know, amen, amen, that we have an assignment? Yes. Amen, amen. We have to do what we are assigned to do. Yes. Amen. And she has uh, uh, com completed her assignment. <laughs> amen. She has done so uh, with honor, amen, and with distinction. And we're very pleased, amen, that God sent her here, amen, to help us. Now, I will say about uh, Reverend Jones, she can preach. And from what I've seen and I've learned of her, she will preach. Amen. 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 She, she, has, she is going to stand right here and preach the gospel. And if you open your hearts, you're going to receive a word from the Lord. Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. Does anybody here need a word from the Lord? Amen. amen. While you got your hand up, point it this way. He said, Reverend Jones, let the Lord have his way. The next voice you'll hear by way of preaching will be none other than our very own Reverend Valerie Williams Jones. Hear ye her for the ability that God has given unto her. And the choir is going to give us selection of the truth. This morning when I rose your I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose your I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose your I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord will take care of me. I know the Lord will provide for me. I know we will. Oh! 
mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I do honor the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. To the shepherds of this house, Dr. John Melvin Wooten and Pastor Patricia Lee. All of the clergy present. I honor my husband, Deacon Arthur Jones, who is not only the priest of my home, my protector, but he is my best friend and the love of my life. To all other deacons, and all under the sound of my voice, I honor my father this morning, yeah. Reverend Dr. J. O. Williams, Sr., the man who is 91 years old, but he makes his way anywhere he wants to go. Amen. Amen. To my sister, Reverend Marilyn Williams. Amen. And Miss Ida, thank you all for being with me. And I, have, I see several friends uh, that have come. I won't call you out, but thank you so much for being with me today to support me. There is a word from the Lord. I don't take it lightly. I know I stand here every Sunday, but it's something different about bringing forth his word. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Lord and our Savior, we humbly come before your throne of grace. God, first of all, we just want to say thank you. God, thank you for this day. God, another day to make things right with you. God, thank you for your son Jesus that died, that we may have life and have that life more abundantly. Now, God, search my heart. God, if there's anything within me that is not pleasing to you, God, if I've done, said, or thought anything that is not pleasing to you, please forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Stand tall in your woman servant that I may be used by you. And God, please let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our scripture this morning has been chosen from Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And when you have it, would you please stand for the reading of God's word? Again, that's Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And the Lord has been dealing with me for several months on the scripture. I hear pages flipping, so I'll give you just another minute. Okay, Ephesians 6, beginning at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take upon unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your lawns girded with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, 
and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the, the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S-P-I-R-I-T, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen? Amen? You may be seated. I will use for a title this morning, Put On, Stand, and Win. Put On, Stand, and Win. The Apostle Paul wrote our text from a Roman prison about 62 AD. He writes this letter to the first century believers at Ephesus. Paul begins in verse 10 with, the urgent, with urgent instructions regarding Christian welfare, warfare as he addresses all the family of God and makes a firm appeal to them as soldiers of Christ. He urges them not to go into battle in their own strength and says to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because every true child of God will soon learn that this Christian journey is warfare. Yes. Satan and his demons are committed to hinder, block, deceive, and obstruct the work of Jesus and to knock the soldiers of the Lord out of combat. Amen. The more effective a believer is for the Lord, the more he or she will experience the vicious attacks of the enemy. Amen. The devil does not waste his ammunition on nominal Christians. Please know in your own strength, we are no match for the devil. Yeah. That's why Paul says for us to put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Please understand that the real enemy is unseen. Therefore, we need spiritual weapons. Our scripture this morning is one that we must go back to because of the visual that Paul gives regarding the whole armor of God. It kind of sticks with us and reminds us of the protection that we have in the Lord and that we are to equip ourselves. We are to put on the whole armor of God. Paul wants us to know that there are two kingdoms, two realms at work in the world around us. And those are the kingdom of light, which is the Lord, and the kingdom of darkness, which is Satan himself. He wants us to know that we have an enemy. It does not take long to see the darkness the evil, the hate that Paul speaks about. If you're like me, it takes only a few minutes to look at the news, to see there's a lot of chaos going on in the world around us. Some of, us, some of it is visible, like the current conflicts between nations, court cases filled with lies, deceit, and uncertainties and racial disparities in professions, income, health care, business, legal issues, and ending affirmative action that is going on right now in our colleges, which will hurt people of color. Even They're even trying to end programs of diversity, equity, and inclusion in our universities, our hospitals, our corporate world, and more. And then this is this, the, this other realm, 
the realm of darkness and spiritual warfare. And that's what Paul wants us to focus on. And he talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Yes, 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 yes. Paul says the word put on several times. Look in your Bible. You have it. So he wants you to he wants to stress to put on the whole armor of God. As I began to study, I could not help but think of my children as they were small. They couldn't dress themselves. So we had to put on their pampers, their onesies, their sleepers, their dresses, because we had our girls, or whatever we laid out for them. As they began to grow, they became independent and wanted to dress themselves. And then all of a sudden, the neck hole became an arm hole, and the arm hole became the neck hole. And they sometimes got twisted. Uh -huh. well. Clothes didn't match, but they wanted to wear it. Or they wanted to wear the same thing over and over and over. When you washed it, you better hide it. If it was their favorite. That's right, that's right. But they didn't know sometimes which way was up. They became frustrated and had to be coached through it. Each time became a little easier. It was the same with shoes. It took time to learn the skill of tying shoes. And then even more time to learn which shoe went on what foot. And we had to work at it. We had to practice putting on their shoes and tying them for what seemed like hundreds of times. It was even harder for our youngest daughter, Linda, because she had zero interest in wearing shoes. But with some patience and coaxing, we got there. And so it is with the children of God. God has given us a clear picture and a precise list of what we are to put on. And when we do, we are protected. We win if we follow his instructions. Here Paul starts by saying, be strong in the Lord and put on the whole armor of God. He wants you to see the picture of what God has done for us and continues to do for us today as a defense strategy to protect ourselves from the many schemes of the enemy. Armor is a way of defending ourselves against all that stuff that's going to come at us. We may not have flaming arrows or double-edged swords being sl swung at our heads, but in the natural, they're in the natural, but make no mistake, there are schemes, yes. chaos, and other things that are at work, at work in the world around us that press into our lives and that make us feel that life is unfair and hard. In our text today, Paul says, we are continually strengthened in the Lord and in the limitless resources of his power. God's best soldiers are those who are conscious of their own weaknesses and ineffectiveness and who rely solely on the Lord. Amen. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.27 states that God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Our weakness is perfected in the power of God's might. Yes, yes, yes. In other words, the believer does not rely on his or her own strength, right. but on the power of Almighty God yes. to be victorious in life's battles. Yes. As a believer, we put on God's divine armor uh -huh. so that we may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. Yeah. It is necessary to be completely armed. Uh -huh. One or two pieces will not do. Uh -huh. Nothing less than the whole armor of God has provided what will keep us. The devil has various tactics like discouragement, uh -huh. frustration, yes. confusion, yes. moral failure, yes. and false teachings to trip us up. Yes. 
rest assured the devil knows our weakest point and aims for it. If he cannot disable us one way, then he'll try another. Our warfare is against demonic forces, against masses of fallen angels, against evil spirits who ex exercise tremendous power. Though we cannot see them, we are constantly surrounded by them. They cannot live in a true believer. However, they can oppress and harass one. Christians should not be absorbed with the subject of demons. Neither should we live in fear of them. For when we are clothed with, when we put on the whole armor of God, we can stand because we have all we need to hold our ground against the attacks of the enemy. As Paul wrote this letter, he was probably guarded by a Roman soldier in full armor. Here he is quick to see a spiritual lesson in the natural realm. He makes the petition and notes we are surrounded by dangerous enemies. Therefore, we must put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand when the conflict reaches its fiercest intensity and still be found standing when the smoke of the battle has cleared. Verse 14 tells us to make sure our lawns are girded with the truth. We must be faithful and hold fast to the truth of God's word. However, it is also necessary for the truth to hold us. We must apply it to our lives daily. And as we examine ourselves by the truth, we find strength and protection in combat. Truth serves as our belt, holding together the full armor of God. And it's our personal commitment. It's living a life that is upright, transparent, and without deceit. Integrity and honesty are vital to a Christian walk. People should know that they can depend on you to be a person of truth and principle. Satan labors to make you a liar just like him. How does he do this? Ephesians 4, 25 states, we put on the, the Lord's belt of truth by putting away falsehood yes. and speaking the truth to one another. Right. We, don't hatefully we don't hatefully deceive like the devil, but speak the truth in love. Yes. We don't cover our sins, but we confess them. Yes. We don't slander, but speak honest words about others. Yes, putting on the belt of truth uh -huh. is an act of faith that resists <laughs> Satan's call to be a liar. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? And then put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. The breastplate covers the heart uh -huh. and shields it and other vital organs. Yeah. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep your heart with all diligence yeah. for out of it springs the issues of life. That is what the Lord's righteousness does for us. It protects us against all of Satan's accusations and charges. Uh -huh. The righteous is not, righteousness is not made up of good deeds that we do. Romans 3.10 clearly states that none of us, none, are righteous in ourselves. The breastplate of righteousness is, in, is entirely the righteousness of Jesus, which he gives us freely when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. It is his righteousness, not our own, that covers and protects us. Every believer is clothed with the righteousness of God. Again, we must equally exhibit integrity and uprightness in our personal lives. If our conscience is clear of wrongdoings toward God and man, the devil has nothing to hold over our heads. Many people do not consider the value of their conscience. 
when your conscience has an offense, it hinders your fellowship with God. Acts 24, 16 states, if our heart is clear, we must do all we can to maintain a conscience a good conscience between God and all people. Yeah. All people. Oh. Even those that are unlovable. Yeah. When our conscience is clear, yeah. we can live holy. Yeah. We can walk in the calling that God has on our lives. Yeah. The breastplate protects our heart. Yeah. All that we need and who God has called us to be. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? As soldiers of Christ, we put on gospel shoes that will allow us to march wherever our Lord leads. John, 1 John 2, 6 states, he who, who, he who says he abides in Jesus ought himself to walk just as Jesus walked. Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Satan will try to place obstacles in our paths. But in the strength of Jesus, we can walk forward following our Lord, obeying him and advancing the gospel. We must put on the shoes of gospel of the gospel of peace and be ready to go out and spread the good news and tell others about the risen Savior. Our safety and our blessings are found in following in the footsteps of Jesus, bearing glad tidings and spreading peace. Amen? Amen. A soldier of the Lord must also put on the shield of faith. Yes. Paul says, above all, take the shield of faith yes. with which you will be able to stand the quench of all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Yes. When Satan attacks with doubts, the shield of faith can block it. Yes. Yes. When temptations come, uh -huh. faith keeps us steadfast in following yes. Jesus. Yes. We are able to withstand all the devil's fiery darts yes. because we know whom we have believed. Yes. This faith is not something that comes from within us. It's a gift from God. Yes. Romans 12, 3 states, he gives each of us a measure of faith. Right. Then as we walk with him, that faith grows and develops until it becomes a shield, yes. protecting us and allowing us to live a victorious life in Christ. This was Paul's experience. Paul said in Galatians 2, 20, I have been crucified with Christ. Yes. It is no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And at the end of that life of faith, Paul declared in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That can only be experienced as we use the shield of faith to turn aside everything Satan hurls at us. Our faith will cause all those darts to fall powerless to the ground. Faith is firm confidence in the Lord and his word. When temptations burn, when circumstances are unfavorable, when doubts arise, when shipwrecks threatens, faith looks up and says, I believe God. Then put on the helmet of salvation to protect your mind against strongholds. The helmet protects the head, perhaps the most vital part of your body, since it's the center of your thoughts and your mind. When we have a sure knowledge of our salvation, we will not be moved by Satan's deceptions. When we are certain that we are in Christ, 
with our sins forgiven, yes. we have a peace that nothing can disturb. Yes. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. No matter how heated the battle, yes. you will not be intimidated because you understand that the ultimate victory is sure. Yes. Romans 8.31 states, if God is for us, who can be against us? A whole range of problems, trials, disappointments, and sufferings will come against us. But we must remember that God did not spare his only son, but gave him freely for us. And freely he gives all things that we need. With God on our side, as our justifier, our intercessor, our keeper, our healer, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. With him, nothing in our past, present, or future, nothing on this earth or anywhere else will be able to separate us from the love of God who is in Christ Jesus. Finally, put on the sword of the Spirit. Which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the only weapon of offense listed in the armor of God. All the other parts are defensive. God's word is described in Hebrews 4.12 as living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Jesus used this weapon when Satan tempted him in the wilderness. To each of Satan's efforts to lead Jesus into sin, Jesus replied, it is written. And proceeded to quote scripture to destroy Satan's temptations. John 17, 17 states, God, God's word is truth. That's why it's so powerful and why it's so important that we study the Bible and become familiar with its truths and its powers. David wrote in Psalms 119, 105, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen? Amen? The sword of God's word both protects us and destroys our enemy, the devil and his temptations. Prayer is not mentioned as a part of the armor. But don't overlook its importance. Prayer is the atmosphere in which a soldier of God must live and breathe. It is the spirit in which you and I must put on the armor and face the enemy. Paul clo closes his list in Ephesians 6, 18 by saying, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Even when we're clothed with the armor of God, we still need to cover it all in prayer. Prayer brings us into communion and fellowship with God so that God's armor can protect us. Prayer should be a habit. And it's the key that it unlocks the resources of heaven. We cannot have victory if we don't pray. Second Chronicles 7, 14 states that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. There must be perseverance in yes, prayer. Yes, yes, yes. We must keep on asking, yes. seeking, yes. knocking. Yes. We also must pray for all believers yes. because we all are engaged in conflict yes. and need to be supported in prayer. Yes. Finally, we must possess a heightened sense of spiritual awareness yes. through prayer. Uh -huh. Our greatest gift is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, God. Being spiritually connected to the source, capital S-O-U-R-C-E, uh -huh. is the most critical component of being battle ready. Yes, yes, yes. 
So invest time and energy here. Pray for wisdom. Pray for protection. Pray for an attitude of submission to God's will. Pray, pray, and then pray some more. When you do, you will find strength rise up within you that you didn't even know was there. Well, it is here in the battle where strength and humility must work together because our responsibility is to persist and we cannot make it without prayer. Prayer, in other words, is our superpower. Amen. Prayer changes us. Amen. And as we seek the Lord and regularly spend time with him, we will be transformed. Yes. Our desires will be replaced by his. And our thinking will align more closely with his thoughts. As our understanding of his character grows, we will have a better idea of how to pray in accordance with his will. Yes. My sister Josie is 22 months older than me. When we were growing up, she was very timid and quiet. Children in the neighborhood and at school often picked at her because she would never defend herself or speak up. I rather was a bit of a tomboy, and I was rough. From elementary school to high school, boy or girl, if you mess with her, then you had to deal with me. As I got older and God touched my heart, I put away those physical, the physical fighting and learned how to lean on God. As I allowed him to fight my battles. Oh, I still fight. But now I'm equipped with the armor of God. So today, whatever battle you're facing, this week or this year, one thing remains the same. God is our commander in chief. He goes before us and behind us in power and strength. John 14, 26 states, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring them back to your remembrance, all that I have said to you. Isaiah 52, 12 reminds us that the Lord will go before us. The Lord of Israel will be our rear guard and we'll, ne we'll never fight alone. The battle that we're in is real. But don't get it twisted. Jesus has already won the war. There's no need to be afraid. No need to be discouraged. Just put on the whole armor of God. Stand and win. As believers, our strength comes not from within ourselves, but from God who has already secured our victory. We don't have to make our own weapons or create our own armor. Instead, Paul urges us to put on. It's that simple. The whole armor of God that is already given to us and take up the weapons of faith that have already defeated our enemy and remember that in the end we win. I'm reminded of an old hymn that we don't hear often now. It simply says, stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Woo. Lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory to victory, his army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm 
the flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the, go the gospel armor. Each piece put on with prayer. And daily he calls us. It says, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victory song. To him that overcometh a crown of life shall be. They with the king of glory shall reign eternally. I urge you today to put on, stand, and win. Amen? Amen. Amen. today and you don't know Jesus for the pardon of your sins if you've never accepted him as your Lord and your Savior and you want this protection because we do fight we fight things that we see and that we don't see but mostly it's the ones that we don't see because people that we see don't even realize that Satan may be using them. Well, right. Amen? Yeah. If you want this whole armor of God, I offer you Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen? He stands with his arms wide open saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly, and he is. Oh, he's fierce too, but he is meek. He'll accept you just as you are. Don't say, oh, I'm going to clean up before I come in. It's just like being a fisherman. You got to catch that fish before you can clean it. So come to Jesus as you are. Amen. And you may be here today and you're looking for a church home. Well, higher calling is looking for you. We're not a perfect church, but we strive to do what God has called us to do. And I promise you, we'll love you. We will love you and we will lead and guide you to what God has called you to be. Amen. 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 So 
say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. The gospel has been preached. The invitation was given. No one has come today. You should die in your sins. Then the blood will be upon your own head. Amen. amen. Not required to this preacher. For she has discharged her duty today. Amen. Let the church say amen. I would like for you to know that if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, as long as you have breath in your body and your right mind, you have an opportunity for salvation. Can the church say amen? amen. And salvation is only a prayer away. Can the church say amen? amen. Can the church say amen again? To God be all the glory. Did not our hearts burn today? woman of God spoke to us by the wayside, amen, telling us, amen, about the goodness of our Lord. You know, uh, I'm going to let you go home, and I am going to say this, Reverend Jones has always given somebody a nickname, when I come up with a good one for her today, amen, because she was dropping bombs today, amen, so I'm going to start calling her the dive bomber. Amen. And one of the things that she said that I considered a pretty decent ball, she says, and I want you to hear me, just in case you didn't hear her. She says, our strength does not come from within, but it comes from God. Let me tell you what your own strength will do. Your own strength will mess you up. Amen? Amen? Your own strength will have folk don't even want to talk to you. Did you hear what I said? Your own strength will make folks see you coming and go the other way. And say, here comes that Christian girl <laughs> who really ain't no Christian. So let's make sure that we don't use our own strength. But let us use that strength that comes from God. Let the church say amen. 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 Y'all, I believe I thought that Daryl was going to get happy. Because he sure was wearing that thing out. <laughs> amen. To God be the glory. We're thankful. Amen. I wanted to make one more announcement before I go home. Oh, by the way, uh, Reverend uh, Pastor Gear is here. Amen. Yeah. And Lady Kimber. Yeah, I gotta say, she makes him look so much better. <laughs> I'm so glad to see her with him. <laughs> That's my friend, y'all. That's my very good friend. Amen. I thank God for him in a very, very special way. Let the church say amen. 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 Uh, my grandson is here today. He didn't keep too much noise. Amen. amen. But I got to tell you, he can set it off. Wow. Amen. Today, 30 years ago, I stood up behind this, a sacred desk for the first time as a pastor. Amen. Amen. At Elam Chapel, United Church of Christ. Amen. Amen. I was supposed to be there this morning on a special day, but circumstances made it so I couldn't be there. But today marks 30 years of pastor. Sometimes I feel like I haven't learned the doggone thing. <laughs> Amen. Dealing with people. Amen. People will make you go get a Mountain Dew. 
Mountain Dew just like drinking liquor. Can't drink it. <laughs> I can't drink it. Amen. To God be the glory, but we are grateful for this journey. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, when, when God called me, I said, What is going on? I, know, right? I had no idea that I would ever become even a minister. Jesus. I just wanted to usher. <laughs> That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to usher, but God had plans. Amen. Amen. We're grateful. And now he has made me the pastor of the best church in the world. Amen. And I am, I am very blessed, amen, to be your pastor. And let me say, uh, you know, for every, I mean, y'all have done amazing while I've been recovering. I still got a little ways to go because uh, I'm in considerable pain right at this very moment. But can I say this to you? God is good, man. Three weeks ago, I wouldn't even be able to stand up here like this. But look at God. Amen. And look at y'all. I mean, y'all have been coming to church every Sunday. And I thank the Lord for you. Amen. You have done everything that I've asked you to do, and you did some things I didn't. I mean, I've gotten more fruit. I've gotten turkey salad. I've gotten meals of all kinds. I've gotten uh, uh, a lot of soup. Amen. Amen. Uh, I've gotten monetary gifts. Amen. I just want to say to you, thank you. Thank you so, so very much. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Now y'all want me to let you go home, though. All right, stand to your feet. Choir's going to give us a closing selection. Can we give this preacher another hand?